The last time I spoke with Sadiq Parani, he told us how technology can make transportation safer and more efficient while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We also talked about how cities can promote cycling as a safe and accessible mode of transportation. Today, we're talking about the shift from gas to EV. Coming up next. Welcome back, Sonic. Nice to see you. Thank you very much, Maria. It's uh, good to see you again and uh, nice to talk to you. That's great. So the last time we talked, you know, we talked about, you know, transportation, because that's really your field of, of of expertise, you know, with where you really bring in how you make cities uh, safe and smart and sustainable. That's what I think. That is right. Yes. That's great. So, you know, today we're going to talk a little bit more about about EVs and about, um, you know, the people's driving habits, that sort of thing. So, you know, just to start things off, explain, you know, how you know, like tra transportation solutions are being made for the first and the last kilometer or mile. Like, what are some things that we need to think of the first and the last mile? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, what is happening uh, nowadays as we talk about, you know, uh, things uh, that we can do uh, to save the envi uh, you know, environment and, you know, uh, do something which is environment friendly uh, and, you know, uh, that can have less uh, adverse effects uh, on climate change and things like that. Um, we, you know, uh, on, on the transportation and mobility side, we are focusing on how we can make uh, these mobility solutions more safer, more mm -hmm. smarter, efficient, and more sustainable. Um, so, the, uh, and, and what is happening is that uh, on the federal level or on the provincial level and regional levels, um, the uh, government and uh, you know, municipalities, they are focusing uh, their uh, kind of uh, you know um, uh, uh, you know goal is to is to um, make that shift from the uh, you know we call it single occupancy vehicles or cars, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, driven by you know one person, um, to uh, something more uh, you know uh, adoptable in the sense like you know public transit or do some active transportation, cycling, and other modes. Uh, and, and what happens is that, you know, because the, the funding is going uh, for different uh, public transit projects uh, nowadays, uh, we see more and more uh, bus rapid transits, uh, LRTs, and, you know, uh, investment in um, subway infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. So the you know, people uh, understand, need to understand how, like, you know, you make your daily commute uh, more convenient, more efficient. Right. And in, in that regard, if, if you are, like, you know, uh, leaving your personal vehicle at home, uh, what are the options uh, people have uh, in terms of getting from their home to the transit or bus station? And then to their work or, you know, school or, you know, uh, shopping centers or wherever they like to go. Uh, and in that regard, there are a uh, few options uh, which has been uh, evolved over the time. And as we see, uh, you know, the uh, ride sharing um, option is available. Uh, nowadays, uh, we see uh, more and more bike sharing. Uh, and uh, there are some scooters, uh, you know, yeah. electric scooters options available for people. And then uh, when it comes to, um, like, you know, uh, shuttle service. Mm -hmm. So you have some shuttle services available, uh, which takes you, you know, from your uh, home to the transit station or bus station. And then uh, when you get off uh, from from there uh, and you are you know going towards your work or school, 
uh, you have uh, again uh, those options available, and and that's that's what basically uh, are uh, sustainable, right. and they are also healthy and active uh, modes of transportation when you talk about public transit or bicycles. So mm-hmm. uh, as you understand, as an example, um, nowadays uh, you know in uh, Greater Toronto area as well. Uh, that uh, the uh, GO Transit, which is Government of Ontario Transit System, Mm -hmm. uh, they are also working on having these uh, autonomous uh, driverless shuttle services, shuttle bus services uh, for first and last miles uh, travel. So, you know, uh, then what happens is that uh, you you can leave your car at home and then you can hop on to those autonomous shuttle services uh, get to the station uh, the nearest to you, and then you know you travel on public transit. Either you are taking bus or uh, light rail or train, mm-hmm. and uh, then when you get to your destination, again uh, there is a similar service available, uh, either autonomous shuttle or you know in the form of bike sharing or scooter sharing, and then that that takes you to the you know, your destination. So you, you can see that, you know, um, it is minimizing the need of personal vehicle uh, for your travel choices. Mm-hmm. And probably also people want to save time as well. Um, you know, if it's made speedy and efficient, all of these things, you know, I think that at the end of the day, um, you know, by, by being sustainable, taking these different modes of transportation to get from point A to point B, people want to get there quickly. Yes, yes, definitely. And and you you can understand, like, you know, uh, when over the time or gradually, uh, when uh, you will see that, you know, more and more commuters uh, will will adopt uh, these kinds of modes uh, of transportation, Mm -hmm. you will have less traffic on the road. Right. Uh, you know, you can make uh, those uh, transportation uh, infrastructure or network more efficient, mm-hmm. uh, less congested. And, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, you can maintain your speed uh, in terms of, you know, uh, when you're driving. Mm-hmm. I- I'm talking about uh, buses or, or, you know, other modes. And it will be more safer for those who are, you know, um, uh, taking bikes mm-hmm. or you know uh, riding on bikes, so it 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 it, it helps uh, in 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 you know diverse ways, right? And uh, and that's that's the that's the goal, that's the objective. Excellent. What do you think about this radical statement? You know, people should give up cars. You know, do you think cars should just go away? What do you think about that? Uh, no, uh, uh, cars would not go away, you know, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> yeah. they, they, they will not go away, but, um, uh, the, the, uh, goal is to, uh, how we can minimize the use of personal vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, so for example, um, if we are talking about, you know, uh, next uh, generation or, or, you know, or, or future of transportation, uh, and we see what uh, young people are doing. And the trend, as you understand, that, uh, you know, these young um, generation, uh, or we call it Generation Z or Z, um, they are basically not into uh, owning the car or personal vehicle. Um, and there are many factors for that. But uh, they prefer to, you know, uh, take ride sharing or, you know, they, they prefer to, um, you know, bike to where, you, where they want to go. And, and what happens is that, you know, they are basically not uh, acquiring a driving license. So the trend is, uh, you know, having uh, no driving license and then, uh, you know, adopting these other uh, transportation options or modes. And, and and in that regard, what happens is that uh, you, when you when you when you when you go you know in that uh, avenue mm-hmm. is basically um, they 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 are uh, kind of helping uh, the environment. They are um, you know uh, trying to uh, like you know help uh, you know uh, 
less adverse effects on climate change and all these kind of things. Yeah. So, so basically, you know, that's the idea. It's a great, great thinking. Yes. Let's talk about the shift from gas-powered vehicles to EVs. Uh, what are your thoughts on 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 that and and that progression? I guess. Um, so again, like you know, as you can see, um, because of the uncertainty, uh, you know, in terms of uh, availability of uh, you know gas, um, you know, or 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 we call it like um, oil mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, you know, uh, uh, which are like the, the vehicles which are powered by, you know, oil energy or gas energy. Um, we are basically uh, going uh, again, making a shift. It's in the transition uh, to electric vehicles uh, and have electric cars uh, and again, buses as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, the idea is, again, uh, that, you know, how to make uh, you know, uh, vehicles uh, more kind of efficient, safe, and sustainable, and uh, you know, less pollutant. Um, that's that's the 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 background behind it. And um, you know, um, in terms of uh, having these infrastructure for charging vehicles, um, you know, whether uh, you're talking about personal vehicles or uh, you know, um, uh, transit vehicles. Uh, what is happening is that uh, nowadays uh, the focus is on uh, in uh, having these um, uh, charging stations, uh, you know, installed and uh, you know ha having strategically located right. at locations uh, which can be used, uh, you know, by the public and uh, by the respective agencies. So they 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 install uh, you know charging stations either uh, at their uh, garage like bus garages or transit uh, vehicle garages uh, or storage places uh, or and then uh, when it comes to private vehicles uh, you see that more and more people are uh, having those charging stations installed uh, in in their homes mm -hmm. and then uh, you see um, you know. Uh, that the not only in U.S. but also in Canada, uh, the federal uh, government is uh, also uh, funding uh, to have uh, you know um, the public charging stations uh, available. Like for example, on uh, at the rest areas or uh, you know where you make stops, uh, you know uh, along the freeways. So it makes it more convenient and more reliable. Uh, to use uh, electric vehicle in that sense, so that's that's the 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 idea be, behind that. Totally. So, give me your top three innovation solutions for active and sustainable transportation. Um. Okay. So let's uh, you know as we talked about first and last mile uh, in the beginning uh, for you know in terms of uh, transportation mode. Um. If, for example, uh, we are talking about active transportation, there is still like, you know, um, uh, the case is that uh, people are taking, I mean, using bikes or scooters for, uh, you know, their leisure activities um, and not for commute uh, as a sense. There are people who are using, but the, the percentage is gradually increasing. And uh, so one one thing is uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, these active modes of transportation is uh, if you are walking, mm -hmm. which is the, the, the healthiest uh, thing or healthiest uh, mode of transportation uh, for your shorter trips, uh, you know, uh, if it is uh, you're going to a grocery store or a drug store to, uh, you know, get your uh, prescriptions and things like that. Uh, you uh, or you are going to school, uh, you know that those are the the shorter trips uh, that you can make. And similarly, if uh, you know uh, the the second option is is the bicycles. So bicycles, as I uh, mentioned, uh, either it can be uh, in the form of bike sharing or scooter sharing, or it can be you know for example if you have your own bike and you are using transit. Uh, you can see 
that not only on buses, uh, but also on LRTs and subways, uh, they have, you know, facilities uh, where you can store your bikes and you can take it along. And then, you know, uh, so for example, you're, you're to, coming from your home to the bus station or train station on a bike, and then you, uh, you know, hop onto the train or bus and take your uh, b- bicycle with you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when you uh, get off uh, to your destination, again, the bike is available uh, so that you can, uh, you know, go to your uh, destination point, um, whether it is work or school or something. So that, those are the, the options mm-hmm. are available. And again, uh, we mentioned about uh, the autonomous shuttle services uh, mm-hmm. that are also coming along. And they are not only autonomous, but they are also electric vehicles. So, uh, you know, um, less harm to the environment and uh, more good for, you know, um, the, you know, uh, for, for our uh, environment overall. So that's, those are uh, the mm-hmm. things that, that are going on. Yes. What are the um, you know, so getting but going back to the you know the shift from gas vehicles to EVs? What's happening around EVs and energy storage around uh, on highways or, or on off freeways? Okay, yes. Um, so uh, again, you know, as um, in in the in the transportation or any other industry, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, you do uh, research and you uh, come up with uh, lots of innovative developments. Uh, so there are uh, there are uh, research and development going on in terms of how to provide uh, you know uh, on the go kind of uh, you know charging uh, locations or 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 facilities. Uh, and there are many options that we see. Uh, we have not seen uh, much in in the North American uh, you know uh, geographic area. But uh, in in Europe and other places, what they are basically testing is um, whether you can have, uh, you know, like uh, some sort of uh, uh, electric, um, um, you know, like a facility um, uh, along the pavement Mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, you can have it uh, something aerial uh, where, for example, if you're uh, buses or uh, LRTs are running, uh, you know, on an at grade uh, in on the transportation uh, infrastructure. Then you can have those uh, cables or electric cables or other, uh, you know, uh, kind of facilities available mm-hmm. to charge these vehicles. And so it is it is basically under testing and un- under research and development. Right. So we may see it. But again, you know, it's it's in the you know like a not not in the near future, but maybe in in like ten, fifteen, twenty years. Yeah, I think it's really cool because you know, just like we can wire you know wirelessly charge our phones, you know, right. you don't have to plug it in. Do yes. you do you see that eventually happening down the road for EVs as well, like where you can just kind of hover over a section on a piece of pavement and charge your car without plugging it in exactly what do you so, think of that like, yeah it, it, it's futuristic it's yeah. uh, you know it, it's interesting it's uh, fascinating and uh, it, it, it and you know like as i said the research and development is going on so yeah. we may see it like you know if if it becomes feasible uh for you know uh government agencies or for you know private uh, you know industry if it, it if it becomes feasible, then it can happen. So l- let me give you an example. You know what we see right now in terms of smart mobility solutions, or uh, previously it was known as ITS, mm-hmm. which is Intelligent Transportation System. The, the the background of this ITS is also very interesting because it started as smart highways. So we you know uh, they. Uh, um, uh, uh, tested uh, a section uh, of the highway where uh, they have installed uh, in California. I'm talking uh, where they have installed, uh, you know, uh, these uh, radars or or detection system uh, where you can, like, you know, guide the vehicle uh, and and you know it can run itself. 
uh, mm. you know, uh, with that technology. But over the time, it, it, it has evolved and, you know, we see more and more like smart vehicles instead of smart highways. Mm. So, you know, uh, you, you never know uh, where the shift is going to be. But, uh, you know, the objective is to, again, make the, uh, you know, transportation more safer, more efficient and smart and, you know, sustainable. Mm -hmm. So th those, those are the ideas. And, and uh, what we see is that is, is a big push, uh, again, as I said, from, uh, you know, having a personal vehicle to uh, either having a shared vehicle mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, you know, going to the uh, sustainable modes of transportation, which are, um, you know, more walking, bicycling, and using public transit. I must say it was wonderful talking to you today. And thank you for, for sharing all of your 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 knowledge and, and all the things that you have your pulse you have your finger on the pulse on a lot of these new technologies and and innovations that are that are coming out. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate having you back. Thank you very much for having me again. And it is uh, always nice talking to you. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, have a great day. You too. Thank you. Autonomous transportation and how we are moving towards solutions to get around sustainably. That was Sadiq Parani of NV5 sharing all he knows about the subject. Thank you so much. This podcast is sponsored by Smart Energy, an annual event that brings together those in the renewable energy space. I appreciate your time today. I'm your host, Maria McGowan.